Okay, so I'm going to go through uh, these questions, and then Tyler's going to stop me at 9.55. Um, okay, so we were, we were working on this big, long question involving uh, this reaction up at the top. Uh, I'm going to scroll down. I will end up coming back up, but the question is, write the balanced net ionic equation for the given reaction. So this is a good, good review on a Monday. I'm going to erase erase everything that I have around this reaction and we're just gonna do it right here so anything anything that's aqueous you guys are gonna dissociate so and anything that's uh, something new that's not aqueous okay you are going to not dissociate so uh, I think I see uh, I see a liquid I see a liquid um, and I see let's see that one's gonna everything else. that one's gonna stay together. Everything else is gonna dissociate, right? Yep. Except for we have to figure out where that water came from, right? Uh, looks like the water came from the uh, that, the NA. Right? Yeah, the OH right there. Yeah, it came from the OH on the NaOH, and it came from. So here you go. It says write the balanced net ionic equation. So there's a lot of it. Okay, I I understand it's a redox reaction. So. Can you guys take a guess if there's one ion specifically that's going to do a whole bunch of nothing? And it usually does a whole um, bunch of nothing because it's always soluble. Uh, the uh, salt? The, or the uh, NaOCl? Uh, the, the part of the salt, the sodium is. Yeah, the sodium. So what I'm going to end up doing uh, is basically canceling out all the sodiums. The reason I can't cancel out the sulfate, you guys see there's no sulfate on the reactant side. Yeah. And there's actually uh, no, let's see if I can find this. There's no chloride, because this is Cl minus. There's no chloride on the reactant side. This is hypochlorite. This is OCl minus. And because those are different ions, those cannot be canceled. So those are not spectators. So really, the only thing that spectates in here is the sodiums. So writing it all out. And we'll just double check. I have an S2O3. What's the charge of theosulfate? Um, minus. I, minus what? Just minus, and I think. Close. Uh-oh. Did my pen just <laughs> Two minus. Two, two minus because you need, you need two of them for, to balance out the sodium, right? Okay. Yep. And then you're going to have an OCL minus. You're going to have four of them. Make sense? No. So you've got four sodium sodium hypochlorites, right? And the sodium yeah. the sodiums again are spectators. So we're not gonna write them in. I have how many hydroxides? Uh you have two. Two OH minuses. And it goes to Okay, on the other side, uh, I have two, two sulfates. SO4. Yep, two SO4s. What's the charge? Uh, in this case, it would be two minus. Yep. Plus, I have four chlorides. Plus, I have an H2O. So the only thing I didn't write there was the sodiums. And I haven't canceled anything else. And I think if you do a quick double check, do you have two sulfurs on both sides? Uh. The Yes. Yes. Do you, two yep. Do you have four chlori chlorides or chlorine? Sorry. Uh, yes. You do. Yep. And then you should have enough to make uh, a water. So you've got how many H's? You've got two H's on both sides. And then you should have uh, you should have a bunch of oxygens. Yeah, Let's see a bunch. Yeah. Of uh, I count. I count nine. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now, again, I was just, I'm trying to show how I would look at if I was doing the AP test. You could do this longhand. You could write out, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I could start it as soon as this goes away. What happened to my bar there? Uh-oh. There we go. You could write out Na, uh, two Na pluses plus S2O3, two minus, plus four... Na plus plus four OCl minus. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've written those two things broken apart. 
I could write out everything except for, sorry, water doesn't break apart because it's a liquid. I could write out everything, okay, with an arrow in the middle. And then I could go through and I could look for things that cancel. And it turns out there would be, I think, six, there would be uh, a whole bunch of sodiums, more than six sodiums. There'd be eight sodiums on both sides that end up canceling. And what you're left with, you're left with the things that do not cancel. So it's a lot of bookkeeping, but you basically... Wait, how is it eight on both sides? Because you have two here, four here, and two here. Oh, you just didn't write it out. I just didn't write it out. I'm not going to write out the whole thing. But you could break the rule of thumb, break down everything that's aqueous into its ions, then look for ions that are the same on the left and the right and cancel them. But in this case... And that does, it, and it, what does that do for us? It gives you the chemicals that basically participate. So do you guys see how it's a bunch of oxygens moving around? Yeah. So it's a bunch of oxygens moving around, and it's a bunch of like the sulfurs and theosulfates splitting up. So the sodium does nothing. It turns out in a lot of reactions, sodium does nothing. There are cases where it does, but in general, if it's a bunch of salts written out with sodium, typically the sodium spectates. Okay. Okay. Um, let me keep moving. Oops, let me scroll down. That was – oh, that was G. So that, that was the end of, end of this one. Um, I, if you guys look in your book and, and if you're, if you're uh, worried about net ionic equations, you can go to the glossary in the back, or not glossary, just go, up, uh, sorry, index, go to the index, net ionic equations, and read through the section. It, it'll just give you some examples. I'm sure there's going to be two or three examples where they just go through and cancel out spectators um, by breaking things down. So. Um, there's that one. So that was, that was the net ion net, the balance. Yep, net ionic equation. Okay. Yep. And that's just the ions that – okay, cool. Yeah, just like – I mean for a strong acid and a strong base, it's just – this is our typical titration. Oh, this is a shorter example to show. You usually end up with water and sodium chloride, right? Yeah. Okay, let's say that these are all aqueous. This is liquid and this is aqueous. Okay, what really happens in a neutralization, if you break these apart, H plus, Cl minus, Na plus, OH minus, goes to H2O, plus oh, yeah. Na plus, plus, Cl minus. You guys see, I've got sodiums floating around, right? And I have what other ion floats around and doesn't change its identity? Uh, the chlorine. The chlorine. So really, in this reaction, oops, OH minus goes to H2O. That's that's a strong acid plus a strong base. It's really just the proton and a hydroxide making water. That's all that's happening. Yeah, so it's really just like, like it doesn't matter if the sodium's there or not. It's still going to be like the same type of reaction. Correct. Correct. Like you could replace, if this was KOH, and you ended up with KCl, you would still end up with the same net ionic equation. Hmm. So what the, question. what the purpose of a net ionic equation is, it's just to show the chemistry without all the extra fluff. That's that's what it's doing. So okay, yeah, question. Okay. Why do we never see like stuff like cesium chloride or uh, rubidium chloride? Uh, I mean, even the, though they're, they're yeah, yeah, I mean, we just they're less common. So okay. I mean, there's they still exist. There's there's still salts. People could mine them out of the ground. They probably would be cesium carbonate or cesium chloride or different things. And yeah, they're there. Okay. It just we just don't interact with them because they're not common. That makes sense. Okay. But of course, sodium chloride is yeah very common. Yep, yep. I'm going to this one. So this is number two, and I'm doing okay on time so far. Yep. Okay, uh, okay, so here you go. A student investigates the reaction of nitrogen oxides. One of the reactions in the investigation requires equimolar mixture of NO and NO2, which the student produces by using the reaction represented above. <clears throat> okay. So what, uh, real quick, what does equimolar mean? What do you think? Multiple molar? Uh, what's equi? Or, or equal. Yeah. Equ 
equal equal molar. Yep, okay. yep. That makes sense. So he needs he needs to get an equal molar mixture of NO and NO2. Okay. Okay. So you just need so, one mole of O2. Yeah. Easy. So if you start out with some oxygen, then you're gonna need to basically react it until you get some NO2. So here you go. It says the particle level representation of the equimolar mixture of NO and NO2 in the flask at the completion of the reaction is shown below in the box at the right. In the box below on the left, draw the particle level representation of the reactant mixture of NO and O2 that would yield the product mixture shown in the box on the right. In your drawing, represent oxygen atoms and nitrogen atoms as indicated below. So oxygen atoms are white and nitrogen atoms are gray. And so if we look, this is uh, NO2 right here. And I'll put all these in, NO2, NO2, and then NO looks like right here. Oops, I missed one. NO, 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 and NO2. So you've got four of each, okay. right? Yeah. So you need to break down some of the NO2s to make just oxygen and NO, right? So, yeah, so you need to put away um, six oxygens and then make the rest into NO uh, NOs. So, well, let's see. I have I have four of the blue ones, right? Yeah. So I need to I need to turn those into NOs. So I'm gonna end up with four additional NOs, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna break down the blue ones here. So N O. And then uh, that means I have if each one of these I canceled out one of the oxygens and and the nitrogen right because I made mm -hmm. NO 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 then I should have one two three four atoms of O left does that make sense okay yeah so then I well, well but I got to turn it into O2 so I'm gonna make you guys see I'm gonna okay. make two of them oh okay right yeah so now I've taken care of all the blues. And I also need to throw in, I need to throw in the original, oops, the original red ones too that were there at the start. So I'm going to draw them in red, even though they're still identical to uh, the blue ones. So I think in my head, I would start with eight NOs. So this is what a grader would look for. And two uh, O2s. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Because if these combine right here, right? Oh, and basically this group would make one, two, three, four, and then you're left with the four NOs also, the red ones. So yeah, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Um. So is this equal uh equal molar mixture? Yep. So that means that the NO and NO2 need to have the same amount of moles, right? Yep. So in in the first in the reactant, right, you have eight moles yep. of NO. Yep. And two moles of O2. Okay, and then the second example, you have four moles of NO2. Yep. Now, that doesn't really make sense to me. What do you mean? Because eight moles and four moles are different. No, 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 no. How many NO2s and NOs do you have in the right-hand box? Um, you have four, four of each. Yeah, that's that's equi oh, that's equimolar. equimolar be okay, equimolar meaning they both, both so, of the so side yeah the the, the yeah. chemist the chemist he wanted he wanted four of each right. Okay. To get that to get that he had to start with. Eight NOs because he had he had no NO2s right. Okay. And he had to start That's with eight NOs and he had to add in two oxygens to get to make an equimolar mixture. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So moving down. Oh geez, I didn't copy it. Uh oh, I'm behind. And then I will give what it says. And that is correct. I'm looking at their representation. Okay, it says a student reads a reference that NO and NO2 uh, react with the equation represented, and I'll draw the reaction. So this is part B. It 
because it, it reacts actually like this. NO, when it's around NO2, this is the reaction he really wants to study, would be N2O3. Um, oh, and hey, here you go. This one is going to have some delta, delta S and delta G, so we're going to skip that part. I'm just going to write down what's given. Delta H at 298 Kelvin is equal to negative 40. 0.4 kilojoules per mole reaction. Okay, it says the student the student begins with an equimolar mixture of NO2 of NO and NO2 in a rigid reaction vessel, and the mixture reach, reaches equilibrium at 298. Um, where it says calculate the equilibrium constant, we're we're not going to do that because it involves this other thing called delta G. So if you were doing this uh, on your own, you're going to skip the part that says delta G, and I'm just going to talk this one through. What, would, what kind of a reaction in terms of endothermic versus exothermic would this be? And then we're going to just review Le Chatelier's principle. So first of all, is this equilibrium, is it endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic. What's, what's the negative tell you? It takes tell you... Yeah, it takes in yeah. energy, no. so it feels no. cold. No, 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 no. Negative. Exactly. Negative means it's losing energy. it releases it energy. Yeah. Okay, so oh, this one releases energy. energy. Yeah. Oh, I see the oh, reaction loses energy. energy. Correct. But no, the product gains energy. I see. Okay. okay, so this is releasing energy. So if you were to draw a, a state, this would be like NO plus NO2. And... N2O3 down here. Okay, whenever you see, just kind of remember this, whenever you see the triangle, triangle always means final minus initial, always, in science and in math. Oops. So for this to come out negative, final and initial, which one has to be bigger? The final. Uh, the initial, correct. So if this is initial and this is final, do you see how I drew it up higher? Yeah. Okay, so again, that's a exothermic. So however you want to remember it, negative is exothermic, negative delta H. Okay, so if I was going to write energy uh, on either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, where would it go in the equation? Would it go with the reactants or the products? Products. Products. So I'm going to put energy in here. Okay, delta. so now let's just talk. Oh, and these are all gases. And I think I might be getting ahead of myself a little because I can see the question they're already asking. In terms of in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, let's just everybody who's here, let's go through one one way you could you could let's say push the reaction or get the reaction to the right hand side. So what are some things that I could do to favor this side? Okay, I, like wh what kind of chemicals could you add? What kind of chemicals could you remove? What could you do with the heat? What could you do with the pressure? Um, let's just let's just review. If, so Arthur, you get to go first because I hear you. You get one thing. You, What's one thing you could do? If you cool down the reactant, yep. yep, cooling favors the right because you would be removing energy by cooling it. Right? Does that make sense? And yep. if, if you're removing energy, which is kind of, if you think of it like chemical, what's the only way for this reaction to replenish that energy? Is to move to the is right. Is to move to the right. So cooling it would favor the right. That's correct. Uh, let's go Savannah. What's something What's something you could do with, let's, I'm going to underline NO2. What could you do to the NO2 concentration to make this move to the right? Would add you, more of it? Yep, you'd have to add more. So you could add more of this. Tyler, what could you do to the N2O3? Uh, uh, so if you remove, uh, if you remove yeah. N2O3, then that would also draw it to the right. And then uh, how about this one? Keaton, you get the hard one. Would adding or increasing increasing the pressure... Would it would that favor the right hand side or the left hand side? Let me, give me a minute to think yep, about this. Yep. So you increase the pressure, yep. pressure with that. Um, that would favor okay, increasing the pressure. Does that 
it would actually favor the left side, correct? Uh, no, it favors the right. Why? Um, um okay. I was thinking it because if you increase the pressure, um, it cl it causes more collisions. It does. Things, so it it does. Energy. That's correct. No, it causes more collisions. But I want you to look. Here's a gas molecule. Here's a gas molecule. And here's a gas oh, molecule. Oh, more likely to hit the N NO and the NO2 are more likely to hit each other. Yeah. So it goes over to the So do you guys, here's, here's the thing with the Chatelier's. If you're looking at gases and you're looking at pressure, you have to count up the moles of gas. So do you guys see I have one mole, two moles on the left, but on the right I only have one mole. Okay. So pressure, increasing the pressure always influences the thing with more moles of gas. It always pushes it to okay. the opposite side of that. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so in like chemical engineering, um, if you were deciding a process to do this, yeah. Um, let's say I increase the pressure, right? Yep. So it moves the NO and NO2 over. Yep. If I siphon out the N two O three, yes. Wouldn't that make it so NO and NO two uh, create uh, creates more of it? Correct. There's no NO and NO two left. Correct. So a perfect so, uh, a, a perfect reactor, you would have to design a way to remove a product. A lot of ways, a lot of times. Hopefully, your product, let's say it has a, a low a different density. Uh, not different density, but uh, how about a different like mm. boiling point? So oh, you could you, you could, you could chill it. Boiling. Well, you could no 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 other way. You could, oh, you could condense it, to, it okay, I and see. It, it would turn to a liquid, right? And then if you remove that liquid from the gas reactor, like you just have a drain, yeah. then if you're removing mm -hmm. the liquid, well, then these guys would continuously make more. So, yes. Can you also, yeah, yeah. Um, like, buy it, like you, can you also design a process, like, let's say, let's just say hypothetically that N203 was drastically heavier than the other yep, two? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, can, can you siphon it out of the bottom of the container that Correct. you're using? Correct. You would, you would use, actually, a centrifuge. This is how oh, okay. this, I know what that is. this is how yeah. it's that big spinny tool. This is how why um, Iran got in trouble because when they produce <laughs> when they produce nuclear grade uranium, uh, they actually get the uranium in gas phase and then they use a centrifuge and the heavy uranium which is radioactive goes to the outside goes to the outside yeah. yeah and they collect that from the outside and mm -hmm. then the stuff that's on the inside of the centrifuge continues can or they just siphon off basically. And and they get rid of that, and then they they are basically enriching. They're they're concentrating the radioactive uranium. So yeah, that's a chemical uh, process. Okay. okay. Um, okay I've, cool. got, I've got five minutes. Let's see what the next question will be. Um, let's see. If I told you uh, the K value for this reaction, um, let's see. It says. If both, if PNO and PNO2 uh, were both one ATM at beginning of reaction, okay, uh, will PN2O3 be equal to one ATM at equilibrium. Um, we think. Okay, so what we what what they're getting you to try and do this is the start of part. Uh, it's B I I. Sorry, the first part we talked about, we kind of skipped, and I just gave you the answer. But I just want you guys to look this value. Can you write your K expression if you're given this reaction? So do you guys remember yeah. what goes on top of your K fraction, um, NO uh, the, and NO2 or N2O3? Which ones? Isn't it the N2O3? The, N2, the N2O3 goes on top. So check oh. this out. So N2O3, partial pressure, and then partial pressure of NO and N, oops, partial pressure of FO2. The nitrogen. And that's equal to 0. 0. 0.7 at, at atmosphere, or sorry, at, point, at equilibrium. And uh, let's see, they want to know, they want to know, can you create one atmosphere of, N2O3 
at equilibrium. So let's just look at this, and then I got to get going. Um, for every for every one mole of NO that you lose, we could do this as an ice chart. Um, you also lose one mole of NO2. Oops, and I put, uh, and you make one mole of N2O3. So it's all one to one to one, right? Yes. Oh, and I sorry, I put this should say. Sorry. NO2 on the bottom. So it's saying if you start with, I'm going to write this as a fraction, one atmosphere, right? And those are losing X and losing X. And then here you're going to gain X. You start with zero and you gain X. And you have to end at 0.7, right? Yeah. So at equilibrium, can we get that to one? So for this to equal one, I just want you guys to see. The question is, can this guy on top, can it equal, oops, one? So, um, so look, at, no. look at the quantity. Yeah, look at the quantity on top. For this to equal one, what would X have to equal? Oops. One, but then one, that would cause you to be divided by zero. Yeah, and I don't no. know what happened. So the X is on bottom would have to be equal less than one. Well, right. well, here's what I'm saying. Arthur's saying this one on top would have to equal one, right? Yeah. If, if this one equals one and this one equals one, what happens to one minus one? Oh, it's zero. Yeah, yeah. and okay. so so you can't get you can't get one atmosphere. Now, if X was say really small, like let's just say you lost a little bit, like point one, point one. Oops, lost point one, and you gain point one on top. Then zero plus point one would be point one, and on bottom you'd get point nine and point nine. And my question would be, can that equal point seven? Point one divided by uh, divided by point nine no, uh, times uh, point, nine. point nine. I don't think so. That doesn't so. So you're never going to get to one. You could solve this algebraically. We're not going to solve it. But no, the answer is they wanted to see this. No, can't divide by zero. If do you um on the like three response questions? Yeah. Would they only give you full credit if you showed like one divided by zero, or if you gave the explanation of um that. Uh, since they all have the the same coefficient of one, mm -hmm. that um, the N N two O O three you can't um be one due to the fact that the other two are the same the, he, thing. Yeah. In, well, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. No, no, no. So guys, I got Okay. Out. See you later. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna head out in just a second. Um, the the answer, Keaton, would be you could say the only way for N two O three to get to one would be to lose all of your reactants. Does that make sense? Yeah. And is it possible with a double arrow, and you guys know how reactions work now, is it possible to have a reaction go completely to, or no. all the way to completion? No. No. Not any reaction, right? Not any equilibrium reaction, because check this out. If you have too much N2O3 and no NO and NO2, which way will the reaction want to go? If, if you have a lot of this and you have... It's going to want to go towards the NO and NO2. Correct, correct. You'll never get rid of all the NO and NO2. So okay. they, they actually ex expected both or accepted both. They said it would only equal one atmosphere if it goes to completion, which it can't. Or they showed the value of K uh, mathematically indicates that there's got to be some reactants left. So I uh, I have a question, a uh, real quick question. Okay, I, um, I got it. Hey, are, are really there, quick, because I got to go after this. Yeah, are there any, like, reactions that can actually equal, like, so equilibrium reactions, right? Are there obviously other reactions that are equilibrium, like things that will always completely go? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. There are. But then we just uh -huh. don't write them as double arrow, so... Um, I'm gonna uh, stop. Okay. I'm gonna uh, stop recording. If you guys have questions, send me an email or try some of those practice problems. All right. I, and I hate to run. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep adjusting hours to make this work, but I gotta go meet with my physical science students. All right. Have, uh, fun. Have a good Bye. day. Yep. Yeah. Bye.